This is my third video on the Emirates ESP32 S3 AMOLED with 1.8 inch FT3168 touch display. Personally, I like this because it comes with a GPIO connector ribbon cable. This flat ribbon cable breaks out the GPIO pins, making it incredibly easy to connect to sensors, modules or any custom circuits. It's a great feature that opens up a lot of options for prototyping. We can use this in bikes and cars for monitoring various sensors and not just that, it can also be used to start and stop the engine and control doors, AC, lights and more. You can also use it for home automation. The possibilities are endless. It's hard to list them all. To demonstrate what I mean, I'm going to build a temperature monitoring system using the DS18B20 waterproof one-wire digital temperature sensor. Of course, I won't overcomplicate it so that you can easily build it yourself. We will display the temperature both on a label and on an arc. If you want to create a more complex GOI, I highly recommend watching part 2 because in that video I showed how to create an analog watch using custom images. You can design your complete UI in Adobe Photoshop or Figma. Export it as images and then use those images in Squareline Studio as part of your UI. Anyway, on screen 2 I have also added a switch that lets me turn an LED on or off instead of an LED, you could use a relay to control higher AC or DC loads. So without any further delay, let's get started. Before you start the interfacing, make sure to download the spinout diagram. It will save you a lot of time and confusion later. Connect the voltage and ground wires of the DS18B20 to the V bus and ground pins on the GPIO connector ribbon cable. Connect the data wire, which is usually the yellow wire to the GPIO 16. Connect the cathode leg of the 2.5 volt LED to the GPIO 21. Connect the inode leg to the VBUS pin through a 330 ohm resistor. So guys, here is my template folder. I start every project using this template folder. Inside it, I have also created a folder specifically for SquareLine Studio project files. And I have also made a separate UI files folder to save the generated UI files. These are not empty folders. If I open the SquareLine Studio project files folder, you can see I have already saved a project in it. In a moment, when we import this project into SQLine Studio, you will understand it better. Basically, this is a template project which I use as my starting point. In part two, I use the same template project to build digital and analog watches. Likewise, in the UI files folder, you can see there are many files. These are the files that we previously generated in SQLine Studio. Whenever we generate new UI files, we copy and paste them alongside the arduino.ino file. Let me open this arduino file. As you saw, when we open the main arduino.ino file, all the related files load automatically. Anyway, this is our main template code and we will be modifying this code to display the temperature and control the LED. So let's quickly go ahead and import the template project into SQLine Studio. While SQLine Studio is open, click on the import project. Navigate to my LVGL template folder and inside this folder go to the SquareLine Studio project files folder. Select the SquareLine project file and click the open button. So this is our basic template project and we are going to modify it to design our custom UI. Before starting the design, we need to set the folder paths. One for the SquareLine Studio project files and another for the UI files. So let's go ahead and do that. I have already explained all of this in detail in part 1 and part 2. Once the project settings are done, we can begin the design process. First, let's delete this label from the screen. Next, we need to add another screen where we will control a load using the switch. On screen 1, we will display the temperature. So let's quickly add screen 2. First of all, we will add screen change events. So we can switch between the two screens. For that, select screen 1 and then on the inspector tab, scroll down and click on add event. Set the trigger type to gesture left. Set the action type to change screen. Click the add button. Select screen 2. Now, select screen 2 and follow the same steps. This time choose gesture right as the trigger and set the screen 1 as the target. Now select screen 1 and from the widgets tab on the left side, 
select arc to add it to the screen one. Then on the inspector tab, go to the flakes. But first, let me play the simulation to show you exactly what I'm going to do. You can see that the arc is currently clickable. I can move the indicator manually. But I don't want that because I'm using this arc purely to display temperature, not to set any value. So I will uncheck the clickable box. Now, as you can see, the arc is no longer clickable. The arc indicator will only move based on the actual temperature value. Next, we need to set the minimum and maximum values for the temperature sensor. I'm entering these values based on the sensor's data sheet. Then let's go to the arc styling section and change the color and width. You can spend more time over here to make it look exactly how you want. But I will keep it simple for now just to save time. I think it looks good enough. Now let's also add a label to display the temperature in numbers. If you have watched my previous videos, you already know exactly how to add labels. Our label is now ready. That's all the work we needed to do on screen one. Now let's move on to screen two. Select screen two and from the widgets tab, select a switch. We can tweak the styling of this switch as well, but it already looks nice. So let's not waste any time on that. What I want is when I turn the switch on or off, it should call a function to control the LED, either turning it on or off. To do that, while the switch is selected, scroll down and click the Add Event button. Set the trigger type to Released. Set the action type to Call function. Click the Add button, check the box, and write the function name. Both the screens are ready. Next, you need to save the project. After this, go to the export menu and click on export UI files. Now, navigate to the UI files folder, copy all the exported files, and paste them into the same folder where your main Arduino.ino file is located. Now, if I open the Arduino code, you will see that all the .c and .h files are automatically loaded. On screen two, we have only added a switch. That's why you are only seeing the switch here. Now, if you go to the UI underscore events.h file, you can check the functions. This is the function we assigned to the switch in Squareland Studio. In the same way, you can explore the other files too. Doing so will really help deepen your understanding of how everything works behind the scenes. Anyway, I will now take a short break to modify the template code and I will be right back. I've also added this header file for the DS18B21 via waterproof digital temperature sensor. Namespace pin contains pin assignments. One wire bus equals 16 sets GPIO 16 for the DLOS one wire temperature sensor. Namespace sensor stores sensor related data. My temp holds the latest temperature reading as a float. Initializes the one wire communication protocol on GPIO 16. This is required to communicate with one wire devices like the DS18B20 temperature sensor. Creates a DLOS temperature object and links it to the one wire bus. This allows higher level functions like reading temperature from the sensor easily. Set GPIO 21 is output for controlling the load in my case LED. Ensure it starts off. These lines handle the automatic temperature reading and syncing the state of a UI switch with a physical GPIO pin. The first line creates an individual timer that calls the temperature timer call bake function every 1000 milliseconds, which is equal to one second to read the temperature from the sensor and update the display. The second line registers an event call bake load one fun to the UI switch UI underscore switch load so that whenever the switch state is changed by the user, the function is triggered typically to control a connected load like a relay or LED. These lines check the current state of GPIO 21, for example, connected to a physical load. If GPIO 21 is high, the switch on the screen is updated to the checked on state. If it's low, the switch is visually cleared unchecked. This ensures the GUI reflects the actual hardware state during setup or sync. The temperature timer callback function is triggered every second by an individual timer. It initiates a temperature reading from the DLOS temperature sensor by calling request temperature function and then retrieves the temperature using get time CBY index 0. The value is stored in sensor my temp. If the sensor is disconnected, the function skips updating the display. 
otherwise it formats temperature into a string and updates a label ui underscore lbl temperature with the new temperature reading additionally the temperature is set as the value of a ui arc ui underscore arc one providing a graphical representation of the current temperature this function ensures the user interface is refreshed with accurate real-time temperature data the load one fun function x as an event call pick for a ui switch ui underscore switch load it checks whether the switch is in the checked on state using lv object has state if it is on it sets gpio 21 to low and if it is off it sets gpio 21 to high assuming an active load configuration where load turns the load on this provides control over an external device like a relay or led directly from the touchscreen interface a message indicating the load status is also printed to the serial monitor for debugging or logging purposes now let's go ahead and upload this program when i run the project i see the temperature being displayed clearly both as a label and visually on the arc gauge during the ui design in SQLand studio i made sure to uncheck the clickable flake for the arc so now when i touch or swipe on the arc it doesn't rotate or respond this is exactly what I wanted since the arc is just for displaying the temperature, not for interaction. When I swipe over to screen 2, there is a switch that can toggle to control a load. Right now, it's turning an LED connected to GPIO 21 on and off. The switch works perfectly. When I turn it on, the LED lights up. And when I turn it off, the LED goes out. Of course, instead of the LED, I could also connect a relay module to GPIO 21 and use it to control an AC or DC load like a fan, lamp or any other load. The whole interface feels responsive and functional. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.